Hi there folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me, you are most welcome. Once again we are having a little look at my collection. I'm laughing because I think you're probably still laughing if you saw the uh, the video, the previous one I shot, which was the uh, basically my greatest mistakes. Uh, the couple of models that I made a real botch of. Uh, I hope you've calmed down now, you've not had a seizure from laughing about them, but Let's move on to some slightly better ones. Um, so we're talking tanks today, armour. And I think one of these tanks you've seen before, but I think most of them you haven't seen. So I think the one you've seen is actually the one that's in the middle, which is the, uh, the Tamiyar mid-production Tiger, Michael Vittman. And if we have a good close look at that, there we go, in the foreground now. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm quite proud of that one. I think I did a reasonable job. It's quite a basic kit, but I added the frule tracks and give it a nice Normandy paint job. Um, it's not overly weathered. It's the tank 222, which is the tank that was used by Vitman, uh, a last minute replacement tank, in fact, that he used at Villas Bocage in that terrific battle that he, he knocked out, I think, 14 vehicles pretty much single handedly and uh, caused real problems for the British Army. Um, looking at tanks and half tracks and all sorts of brand carriers and all sorts of things but anyway a legendary sort of tank in a very famous encounter also in the background we've got an extreme background behind the tiger is the king tiger which is also the Tamiyar kit um, it's the Arden one that comes uh, with the motorcycle motorcyclist and the figures as well um, several of the figures that you can see are in fact from the Panzer Aces series which is the uh, ICM figure set in 35th scale. Uh, really good, recommend them. Very very nicely done, really well moulded, sharp, not flashy, nice kit, you know. But um, yeah, I thought, I thought I'd sort of show a little collection of these, but I think it's probably better if I sort of present them, try and move them around a bit, present them in a way that you can see them a bit better. So we'll just move the Tiger's that really weighs a ton because of these frilled tracks. It's heavy. It's the heaviest model tank of all of them. I'm going to be very gentle. I'm going to move this chap, this chap here that's loading the uh, 88 millimeter shell. Just, just take a look at him for a second. He reminds me of Mr. Spock. Strange how you can have these figures and then when you paint them up, they can almost change their character depending on the paint job that you've got. I just wonder if we can see that. Can you see what I'm saying? He looks a bit like Leonard Nimoy, doesn't he, to be honest? Very, very interesting. It looks like Spock is doing some ammunition loading. Anyway, we're going to move him over there, out of the way. In fact, I think we'll move him right out of the way over there. And we're going to very carefully lift this out. We've got the panther here. You're now looking at the tiger, of course. Which we need to sort of move around a bit so you can see them all. So I'm going to just... Rotate our turret for this panther over there. Wait, move this very heavy tiger. It really is a heavy tank now. for a kit. It's all one metal in the tracks. It makes it weigh an absolute ton. Right, so now perhaps we can get a bit of a better look at this uh, king tiger, Koenig's tiger, in the background. Let's have a closer look at this. This is from, as I say, it's the Arden set, and. Uh, I'll just rotate my turret around a bit more out of the way. Um, if you look carefully on the right there, you can see that's the motorcyclist that comes in the set from Tamiyar. who is shouting updates to the, uh, the Tiger uh, commanders. Uh, it's given the t sorry, the King Tiger commanders in shouting some more updated orders and instructions for him. And he's riding, a, I think it's a BMW. Is it a KW? Uh, anyway, it's one of the German motorbikes, and yeah, so we have there the uh, there's the King Tiger. Now, here's a word of warning for you modelers out there: uh, if you haven't built many of these armor kits, and you've seen perhaps in some of the reviews where we have a nice turn metal barrel, for example, and they're really nice. Some of these turn barrels, and they they always look better than a plastic one, generally speaking. One exception actually was the Tiger, where I actually decided in the, I bought the metal barrel and I didn't think it was the right scale, it was too thin I thought, the barrel, it wasn't right and I thought the, the one in the kit looked more scale-like so I went with that. Generally, 
the metal ones are better. But here's a word of warning. You can see here, if you look very carefully at the front of this barrel, uh, where it comes out from the mantlet at the front of the turret, if you look very, very carefully, you can see I've actually got a jerry can just helping prop it up because this is a master model, I think it was. Um, it's okay now because it's um, not been used for a while, but if I leave that for 10 minutes, it'll probably droop down because of the weight is so great. Uh, and this is the danger with adding some of these extras. You do find that uh, it creates a whole new series of problems. Anyway, I'm quite pleased with my Arden target. I didn't, didn't do a terribly great job with the weathering. Um, there's one or two shell holes in it, but this is where expertise and experience comes in. I built that about six years ago, maybe more. Um, they're not, not quite right, those shell marks. They're not the most realistic you've ever seen. The weathering's a bit rudimentary and lazy, to be honest, on that one. If you want to learn how to do <laughs> from the master, uh, the ultimate, from what I've seen anyway, in terms of weathering tanks, you want to go and watch the YouTube channel of Night Shift, Martin Kovac. This guy's an absolute genius. Uh, be careful though, because if you are relatively new to modelling, it might all seem a bit too much for you. I've got to be honest. Even for me, I think, Martin, I can't do that. You know, I'm not going to get the same result that you get. But he has all sorts of techniques. So for things like um, shells that have bounced off the turret on a Tiger, he uses a drill bit and he just puts an impression into the turret with the drill bit. Whereas what I did is I used the, um, I can't remember what the implement was, but it was a hot metal rod or perhaps a needle or something, something like that. Uh, heated it up. But then you get a slightly unrealistic plume around the outside, which you don't necessarily get with a tank shell hit in real life. But go and look at Night Shift. He's got a really good YouTube channel. Can't recommend that highly enough. He must be the the cleverest modeler I've ever seen and the effects he gets. He can do everything. He can do dioramas and buildings and he's amazing. So I'm not trying to promote other people's stuff but he stands out as being unique. <laughs> Definitely worth a look. Anyway, I'm no, no capacitor to him, that's for sure. Nowhere near his skill. But I quite like my King Tiger. It's got the Arden camo on it. Um, and we've got a motorbike so that's a, it's quite a nice one does the job, sits nicely in my collection. I've got my uh, my figures, which are the Tamiyar ones, of course. Uh, come standard in the kit, provided you get this sort of Arden version, but let's have a little closer look. There we go. Yeah, they're quite nice figures, and uh, I say I mixed them in with the Panzer Aces ones. Uh, this has got a turret on the King Tiger that is it does include the breech and all the uh, the gun racks inside. Can you see the ammunition racks? See the ammo stacked up inside the turret? It's quite narrow access, isn't it, to get out through there? Uh, that's not going to be easy in an emergency, I don't think. But anyway, um, yeah, so as I say, I didn't do the greatest, uh, the greatest modelling job on this. I think that if I had it again, I'd do a lot more weathering, trying to be a bit more gritty and a bit more realistic. But it's a pleasant looking King Tiger. So we'll put that aside. Now then, we seem to have been very focused on these, uh, these Nazi tanks. How about an Allied tank? And in this case, something a bit different. How about the T-34? T-34-76, I think it is. Uh, it's the ICM kit. And I have to say, a really nice kit as well, this. Um, yeah, it's got everything you need. Uh, that very strange uh, road wheel layout that the uh, the T34 had, where you have uh, you can see the impact, can't you? Uh, the, we know the Germans had problems with their materials, and they ended up with a steel wheel Tiger. Well, on this T34, I think the original iteration of it had all rubber wheels, but then they dropped them on the inner three road wheels, as you can see. Only the front one, the first and last so to speak, have got the rubber the rubber tread on it. Interesting. But it's a really nice kit, a bit of uh, winter weathering on it. It's definitely aimed at the, uh, it's the eastern front in winter this one. Um, very easy to build, nice kit to be honest. I can recommend that one to you, not very expensive either. And of course ICM uh, in the Ukraine and uh, 
They're definitely a, one of the most improved model kit companies there is out there at the moment, I'd say. So, yes, we like that one. Quite impressed by this. Um, nice tank. No interior detail on this one, unfortunately, but uh, there we have it. So I'm going to move that aside. The exhaust at the back, look. A bit of detail there for you. A little bit of weathering going on. Yeah. Got the horrible brown, pinky snow. When the snow sort of... Uh, it's muddy, uh, but I didn't go mad with the weather, it just, just a gentle job on it. Then we've got the Panther. Now, then, he wants to come in. Now, this is, this is one of my earliest tanks I did uh, of the 35th ones, I think it's the earliest one. So, it's not got very advanced weathering or painting techniques, so please bear with me on that. Whereas the Tiger was the last one I think I made. No, sorry, T34. T34 was the most recent. And the tiger before that, but here we have the uh, the panther. It's got the uh, kill rings on its barrel, showing the tanks it's knocked out. We've got some of these um, dragon uh, Normandy Panzer races I mentioned characters, um, and it's it's the Tamiyar kit. It's the Tamiyar uh, Panther F. Is it the F? I think it's the F. The old kit, anyway, this is an old, old kit. It's been going since the 80s. Um, but it's a nice kit, builds up okay. You can always enhance it with a few things if you want to. Or there's the Pat G has come out more recently. And yeah, you know, uh, it's up to you really. I think the beauty with tanks is you can't really go wrong. Yeah. I mean, I am um, one or two of these I've done, I think, quite a nice job, and other ones I've been very, very bone idle and lazy. It doesn't make that a huge a difference, whereas on something like a racing car or an aircraft, it, as we've seen, it does. Um, but with armour, you can get away with a lot, you know. But the beauty is you can always go back. I mean, I can go back now to this when I feel inclined and, you know, do a wash on it, do a little bit of streaking and some rust and some grime, uh, maybe a bit more mud and stuff. You know, you've, you've always got the option to go back and do it, enhance it a little bit more. I'm going to move him aside, our panther. Um, we've got one or two figures here. Now I'm going to move in, move him aside as well, our uh, motorcyclist friend. Oh, we've got a cat here in the background. Uh, this is a model of, uh, a scale model, my cat, that I used to have. She's sadly no longer with us, but uh, yeah, we lost her a number of years ago. But um, I modelled this very accurately, uh, based on all the photographs I had of her. So the actual, sorry. The actual patterns, the detail of her, her fur, colours, etc., are very, very accurate. Uh, our cat was called Scampy, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I I did a scale model of her, right down to individual markings on her legs, as you can probably see. And uh, yeah, I was very pleased with that. And it, it sits in the cabinet, and she, of course, she's sitting on a, a Panther. I think they are 75 millimeter Panther tank shells box so there we go <laughs> so that, that just shows what you can achieve I suppose if you want to get get really detailed with your painting and uh, trying to make something a, a real scale replica of something in real life you know now then we also have here a German soldier he's one of the Ardennes guys again I think he's one of the Normandy Panzer aces uh, Russia, uh, sorry, he's the um, Arden winter uniform he's got on, of course. And uh, this is nice. He's got the Panzer Faust in his left hand, and he's got a, no, and he's got a, he's well armed. He's got a rifle, a Mauser rifle. He's got a stick grenade, a potato masher, as we sometimes call them, and a Panzer Faust in his hand as well. So he's well, well prepared for the attack across the Arden forest. And uh, yeah, he's got plenty of weapons on him, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, now then. To see if I can get him to stand up. There we go. And then last but not least, how about some allies? Because we seem to have a lot of Germans here. I think we need to rebalance the situation. I'm going to come back a bit. I'm going to move in my little tray here. It's got our allies on it. Here we go. Now then, let me just ask you a question here. We've got a Sherman Firefly, we've got an American Jeep. It's the only GI that I've got. I need to change that actually. I 
as I was preparing this, it just occurred to me, I thought, well, where are the Americans? You've got plenty of American planes, but you don't have too much American armour. Obviously, you know, they uh, got the American star on the Firefly because it was the, the Allied agreed markings. But I need to redress that band. I seem to have got a lot of uh, German Nazis here. Somebody once came to my house, a visitor, and said, you got, are you a Nazi? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, you've got all these Nazi planes. We've got a lot of RAF planes as well, but anyway, they only saw the Nazi ones. Um, we've, got, we've got some American uh, USAF stuff as well, but we need to get some more American troops, I think. Uh, I'm going to have to invest in a good set. I might look around. Some American infantry, that would be quite cool. Anyway, in the meantime, we've got some British infantry. I'll zoom you in so you can see a bit better. Bring the, the light in over here because it's a bit far away. There we go. Now then. These are, this is the um, Sherman Firefly, the Normandy Sherman Firefly, with its uh, 16 pounder gun, uh, 17 pounder I should say. Um, and we've got, it comes with this, uh, it's the Asuka kit, that is rebranded for Tamiya, a really, really nice kit with these figures. And we've got the uh, British Army patrol, uh, infantry patrol, going out to support the Sherman. Now, if you look at the Sherman, Something very odd that struck me about this. Just look at the captain of the Sherman tank. Who does he remind you of? He looks like Prince Harry. <laughs> he really does look like Prince Harry. I'm going to bring him up closer so you can see what I'm talking about. I think that is... He looks like Prince Harry's twin brother to me. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think it's Prince Harry. I really do. Anyway, so we've got our Sherman Firefly, which is more than capable of knocking out the Tigers. Any of these German tanks, so uh, we're really... We're sort of levelling up the playing field a bit here. Then we've got these... Um, these nice figures. Let's have a closer look at these. Uh, they're really, really good ones. I've got to say, they're beautifully rendered. Very good... Uh, clear sort of facial expressions. You can see that they are... That's better. So this guy's carrying a Sten gun at the front. He's the sergeant, I think. We've got one here, just in front of the tank, to the right here. He's carrying, uh, looks like a Bren gun. Chap with the Lee Enfield rifle. Another chap here. Oops. Another chap here who's having a chat to the American GI in his jeep, probably having a discussion about where the Germans are. And, uh, and then there's a guy at the back, you can probably see, that's bringing up the rear. He just looks like he's about to load his rifle. Um, and we've got the Firefly, of course, which is probably the most important tank that the Allies had in Normandy, really. Without a shadow of a doubt. Anyway, there you go. That's, um, let's look at this jeep as well, because uh, I don't think I've ever shown this before. Got a lot of apparently empty petrol cans in the back. They'd be very useful in the UK right now. We've had this petrol crisis, so having a few petrol cans is not a bad plan, I can tell you. <laughs> Here we go. So we've got a Jeep, and you can see that it's got the windscreen is down, but we can see him pop that up. And on the back of the windscreen, it has this holder for his, uh, I think it's a Duran rifle, the Garland. Garland. Uh, probably the M1 carbine, isn't it? Yeah, that's a really nice. It's, again, it's a Tamiya 48 scale job, you know. Uh, the Willis Jeep it is. That's the kit we're talking about. Willis Jeep. And uh, it's a nice kit. You know, can't fault it at all. And it's nice that it comes with the figure. There we go. Yeah, so that's, um, just pop that windscreen down again, I think. There we go. They tended to drive around with the windscreen down, simply so that they could uh, quickly grab onto the, uh, get hold of the rifle really quickly in an emergency. Um, perhaps the windscreen would be up if it was raining, obviously, but I think generally that was the way it was portrayed. But, um, yeah, we've got quite a nice... Um, Nice Sherman, some nice figures. Uh, unfortunately, this kit, I'm going to be sounding like I'm teasing again. 
This kit, the Sherman Firefly with the figures, is not in production, I don't think, anymore. I think it was a limited run for the um, 2014 Normandy, um, would that be his 60th anniversary, was it? 70th anniversary, 70th anniversary in Normandy. And consequently, I don't think you can get your hands on it. You, you probably can on eBay. When you shop around a bit, you'll probably get one. But I say it's the Asuka kit. So if you see under the Asuka branding, or the Tamiya kit, definitely recommend it. I mean, Tamiya do these kits now, uh, armour kits like recently they've released the Sheridan, which has got these Vietnam, Vietnam War era American GIs. <coughs> Fantastic uh, figures. Some of the nicest I've seen are in that kit. Really nice. And then they released the Achilles, which is the American M10 tank destroyer, but the British version of it with the um, 17 pounder again, the same gun. And again, some British um, figures. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's got beautiful figures in it. It's got uh, all, all, lots of weapons and there are sustained machine guns uh, that, that they have stowed around the, the open turret because it has an open turret of course. Really, really nice kit. Uh, recommend that one to you very, very highly indeed as well. So some beauties. I mean I have to, I have to confess that most of these are Tamiya. Um, if you want the ultimate in uh, kits with figures you're probably going to have to go for Tamiya. But if you want the ultimate without figures, I think Ryefield. The likes of Ryefield and Dragon. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's probably the dust from these old models making it go. <laughs> they haven't been out in the cabinet for a while. But yeah, Dragon have got some nice kits and then Ryefield have got some absolutely stunning ones, you know. And Meng as well. Meng do some lovely kits. They've got a lovely uh, Jag Panther, which I've got. Actually, I haven't built that one yet. That would go very well with this set, wouldn't it? Mmm. <laughs> And in fact, I mentioned Night Shift on his um, channel, and I think he was doing a, uh, a video, which I haven't had time to watch yet, and that was actually at the weekend, so there's a, there's a really good one about building a Normandy Jag Panther. Anyway, I need a cup of tea, obviously, <coughs> so I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you found these interesting, just a little assortment that I've got. Um, hopefully making up for the fact that we haven't been able to get to Telford, um, some of us. And making you think about, you know, which which kits that appeal and whether you think that you might benefit from having some figures added. I know a lot of people don't like figures. Uh, they shy away from them. Um, I would just say to you, just just have a just get a cheap set of figures and have a play around because I mean my paint job and things like the faces, it's not you know it's not the best. It's not art. Some people have a real knack for them, I think. And it's almost a skill set of its own figure painting because you've got all these tones and, you know, skin tones. And obviously the, some of these guys I did do on the Michael Vittman, I did him looking slightly unshaven, um, which I haven't done on all the figures by any stretch of the imagination. It did work really well. You've just got to experiment, I think, to, to get them right. Um, try and make sure you have the highlights on the nose and the cheeks. Generally that works. And, you know, the backs of the hands and things like that. Um, or rather, the backs of the hands may be a bit sunburnt, whereas the palms are very light. Things like that. It just takes practice and looking at, at pictures of other people's work to help you. Um, but it's not something you're going to learn overnight. I, I've only just started the figure painting, really. And I would say, out of ten, I'm a three. Long way to go, I think, with the figure painting. It's an acquired skill. Um, it's just practice, practice, practice. Um, and that's some of the things that I must admit when I go to Telford I do look at some of these big figures that people do. Some of them are so lifelike aren't they? They're quite incredible. The tonal range in the, you know, the people's faces and the, the lines on their faces and all that kind of thing. Absolutely incredible. Anyway, I hope you found it interesting just to have a nosy at my, a few of my armour kits, some of the ones you won't have seen before. Um, I might have a final video where I just dig out some of my better kits. You may have seen one or two of them, I don't know, but um, Hopefully they'll be, if you haven't seen them, it might be food for thought and uh, help you select your next model if it's your cup of tea. Anyway, in the meantime, I hope you'll uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, ding the notification bell uh, for those subscribers that haven't done yet for the early warning for the next video. And uh, until the next one, 
I just say thank you very much for joining me and uh, giving me your time. Uh, please look after yourselves and bye for now.